I know that lately I've been busy doing the I want to talk about videos on my favorite games of given years, and you probably were expecting that to come next, and trust me, that is coming after this video. I'm probably going to film the two back to back, but recently this kind of showed up on my radar and I thought it would be worth talking about in a video. It helps that I had a script prepared pretty quickly for it, and by that I mean I didn't even really have to write much down. So I thought I'd take a quick pause in the video game related videos to talk about something music related, because this is pretty interesting and a pretty big deal if you know anything about the group that I'm going to be talking about today. So, welcome back to I Want to Talk About, the series where I take a topic, I sit on camera, and I blabber about it. And as you can tell from the title today, I want to talk about the newly leaked version, release, let's say, of the planned but cancelled 2018 Brockhampton album, Puppy. Oh, oh, sorry. Wrong puppy. This is my puppy. This is Teddy. I couldn't resist the urge to put him in this video because the album is called Puppy, and Puppy is what I often call him. If I see him, I'll be like, hi, puppy. So, hey, this is what happens when you name an album Puppy. I have to make a joke about a puppy because this is mine. He might not be able to be in the video itself right now, but hi, Teddy puppy. Anyway, no. Much as I'd love to talk about my dog in a video, we are not talking about him today. We are talking about Brockhampton's album. Puppy. There we go. This one. Also, for some of you who are really big Brockhampton hardcores like myself, I know that there are multiple different cover arts of Puppy. I went with this one because the outlet that I listened to this album through had this as the cover, so I just decided to go with it. Anyway, Brockhampton. You probably know them if you've been around my channel, even if you haven't, if this is your first video here, which if it is, hi, how's it going? Thanks for coming over to the channel. Really appreciate it. But if you don't know, Brockhampton, the all-American boy band, the self-proclaimed best boy band since One Direction, a hip-hop collective that ran from the 2010s through the early 2020s, a group that came in on a huge wave when they released the Saturation Trilogy in 2017, being, like I said, a hip-hop collective that kind of dubbed themselves as a boy band solely because, well, they're boys and they're in a band. They largely did it to kind of flip the boy band label on its head and do their own thing. And obviously those saturation records were really big, as were the subsequent five albums that they would put out afterward, Iridescence, Ginger, Roadrunner, New Light, New Machine, and the double feature of The Family and TM that they dropped in 2022 as their final records before disbanding. Now, these albums are great. I personally enjoy all of them, even though there are some that fans are not quite as into, but some of you might be hearing me talk about those eight albums and wondering, well, what's Puppy? What's this thing then? Where was this? Where does this belong in the pantheon of Brockhampton albums? And I'm so glad you didn't ask and I just decided to say it because it made sense for the sake of the video. So Puppy was the planned fourth studio album from Brockhampton that was going to follow the Saturation Trilogy in 2018. Actually, originally what was going to follow the Saturation Trilogy was a record called Team Effort, but that album got scrapped because according to the band, not long before its planned release, they spoke to God and she claimed that they should save it for another time. That other time never came, but hopefully it was a nice conversation with her. But either way, team effort was scrapped and Puppy came along. It was announced as the next proper Brockhampton album, the fourth studio album, and it was going to be their first album under their new record deal with RCA. They had signed with RCA in 2018 and that was going to hopefully help them to reach greater levels of popularity. As it turns out though, this did not become the group's fourth studio album, Iridescence did, because as many of you may know, in 2018, one of the group's main leading members, Amir Van, was kicked from the band. I talked a lot about this in my video last year that I did on the documentary, The Longest Summer in America, which was a documentary that covered the making of Puppy, as well as the Amir drama and the eventual release of Iridescence. And you can check that out at the link in the description. But yeah, Amir, in a group that had a lot of members, because Brockhampton was the type of boy band that not only credited the lead performers as members, but they would credit their producers and graphic designers and creative directors and so on and so on as official members of the group. Amir was someone who, I joked about this in that Longest Summer in America video, but I'm going to do it again because it's one of my prime Brockhampton jokes. He was arguably one of the big faces of Brockhampton, 
maybe even quite literally the face of the band because it was his face that was on the cover of the three saturation albums. But in 2018, he was hit with a wave of allegations that were a very huge deal for the band and for its fans, especially the fans, given that Brockhampton was such a down-to-earth group that a lot of the fans very heavily related to, and the group was very active in fighting for different social causes as well. So the Amir drama was a big deal. Obviously, it's something that a lot of people probably know because it was a huge media circus, but it ended with Amir being gone from the group, and eventually Puppy was scrapped, and the fourth studio album that we ended up getting, like I said, was Iridescence. But Amir's departure was a huge divisive thing for the group and for the fans, as there were constant debates, both artistically and morally, about Brockhampton and the decision to get rid of Amir. From an artistic standpoint, there were a lot of questions about, is the music anywhere near as good now? Has the group lost their edge, given that Amir was kind of like the dirty, grimy, gangster rapper of the group? Quite frankly, he spits the first bars on the first Saturation album, and his first line that he says is, I got pipe dreams of crack rocks and stripper poles. This is the artist we're dealing with here. Without him, did the group lose their edge? Did they struggle? Was the music bad afterward, etc., etc.? And morally, there were questions of, did he deserve to stay? Had he atoned for what he had done? Were some of the things that he had done too serious to the point where even if he did atone, the group shouldn't have kept him around? It's a huge debate that even now that the group has disbanded, is still a huge topic of conversation among the fan base. And it really affected the subsequent albums as well, because while I personally would say they were all really good, and many would say that most of them were very good, there were a lot of people who really just did not enjoy anything that Brockhampton had put out after Saturation 3. And while I think some people might not want to admit it, I think there were people who genuinely were not willing to give those albums a chance because of Amir's departure. And it was with that that Puppy became more of this elusive thing because it was almost like this butterfly effect type thing of what would Brockhampton look like if this thing actually came out as planned. It especially helps that Brockhampton is a group that is the victim of many a leak. And we had been hearing snippets and leaks for years, including a lot of material that was supposed to show up on this project. And it felt like for years there were a lot of people who had wanted to put it out. Within the community, there were people who kept teasing that they were going to release it. But even de facto leader of Brockhampton, Kevin Abstract himself, had tweeted at several points that he wanted to give the fans puppy. Hell, I believe their record contract with RCA was for six albums and they only ended up releasing five. So who's to say releasing Puppy couldn't have just fulfilled the contract. Regardless of whether it did, recently in the past week as of the time of this recording, in early April, the full album got posted onto the internet. Again, like I said, we had been hearing snippets and leaks and things like that, but not quite at CD quality, but just recently the whole album showed up in CD quality form on the internet. Something that Kevin himself even acknowledged because he tweeted, Y'all finally got Puppy, God bless. So obviously this is a huge day for the fandom because we have been hearing about Puppy for years, fans have been debating about it for years, and now it is finally here and fans can listen to it, or at least most of what it was going to be. Now on a personal level, I will say that Puppy was an album that while I was kind of fascinated by it because of its elusiveness and you know that human condition of I can't have it so therefore I want it, I can't say Puppy was something I was absolutely begging for. I was interested by it, but I think I was kind of okay enough with how things had gone that I didn't mind not having Puppy. I will also say, again, on a purely personal level, that Brockhampton's 2019 album Ginger, I've said this before, is my favorite album, and while I might be exaggerating a little when I say this, I consider that the album that saved my life. Again, not literally, but that album has had a huge personal impact on me. It's helped me through a lot of tough times. It's helped me to heal in a lot of big ways. It's an album that's super important to me. And a part of me feels like if Puppy had come out, we would have never gotten Ginger. So in a way, I wasn't necessarily like begging for Puppy to be released. I was in the boat of, if this thing comes out, I'll be happy. If it doesn't, I won't lose sleep. I have Ginger and the other albums, but especially Ginger. So when the album showed up online, I had only really heard about it because of Kevin's tweet. And I was like, wait a minute, fans got puppy, what happened? And then I saw that the whole album released and I thought, oh, cool, I guess I'll listen to it. And I did. 
and it was 14 tracks in 51 minutes, which is pretty decent length. Not crazy long, but you know, standard Brockhampton length. And as far as my opinions on the project, I feel like I'm going to be the not having fun guy in this video. Because again, a lot of the fans were happy to see this released and I understand why, but I feel like I'm a little conflicted by it. Because let me get this out of the way right now. If this album had released in 2018, I have full confidence it would have been amazing, and I do think the material on it is really good, but I kind of noticed when listening to it that I feel like I had already heard most of it. I was kind of expecting, maybe because I didn't know as much about Puppy as I thought I did, I was expecting to hear a lot of songs that went entirely unused, but a fair bit of the material on this release ended up being officially repurposed by Brockhampton in some capacity anyway, so I felt while listening to it that while I was enjoying myself, I wasn't really getting as mind blown or thinking about the hype as much just because there was a part of me that was like, I feel like I've heard most of this already, especially in an official capacity. Like, if this was stuff I had heard through leaks and snippets, and then it just ended up on the album, I would think, well, cool, nice to see those leaks and snippets have a CD quality version now. But it's not just that. These are songs that I have heard in an official capacity released by Brockhampton, but these are just early versions that in some cases aren't necessarily that different. For example, there's the track Something About Him, which already appeared on Iridescence, and at least from my side-to-side -side comparison, I didn't really notice too big a difference between the version on here and the version that ended up being on Iridescence. There's also a track on here that's simply labeled Puppy, which was basically the 1997 Diana track that they released in 2018, part of their 1990X series. It was three tracks that started with one of the years of the 1990s. And the track Puppy, like I said, is 1997 Diana, but it just has an instrumental outro. And that outro was nice, but the fact that the song had already been released made listening to it on this project not as insane to me. And while it never really got an official release per se, the track 409 is basically just the wintertime interlude that Brockhampton had used in the last episode of their Keeping the Band mockumentary. And sure, it's nice to hear a more cleaned up version of it, but there's not really much else I can say about it other than that, especially because it's not like this is an expanded version or anything like that. The version that's on this project of Wintertime is the same version that we had heard in keeping the band. So after listening to it, I was kind of just like, oh, well, nice to hear that track again. And there are also several songs on here that were released in official context where there are noticeable differences, but in a passive listening experience, those differences didn't really mean much to me. Like Big Fat Liar and Don't Talk Back are essentially early versions of the other 1990X tracks 1999 Wildfire and 1998 Truman, respectively, but this time around, they have Amir on them. Again, after Amir was ousted from the group, there was pretty much nothing else released with him on it, and the only difference between the versions here and the versions that we got are that Amir is on them. In the case of Big Fat Liar, he has a verse that was removed entirely on Wildfire, and in the case of Don't Talk Back, they just took his hook that he had on the song and replaced it with a Merlin hook on the final version, 1998 Truman. And yeah, Amir slides on the beats here, but it's not like I'm hearing totally new versions of these songs. In a way, I kind of feel like I'm just hearing fan edits that you'd see online of like, what would this Brockhampton song sound like if Amir was on it? This is a really specific example but if you've seen that video online where it's what would the song Big Boy from Ginger sound like with Amir on it and it's basically just the song but they included Amir's verse from the track Glock 19 on his Emmanuel EP I just felt like I was hearing something like that again not that that's necessarily a bad thing just that it didn't really blow my mind. I wasn't listening to it thinking holy crap we finally got this thing. I sat there thinking whoa, this is what everyone was talking about for so many years? And then the tracks One More Hand and God Bless You are just tape and weight from Iridescence, but in the former's case, One More Hand has an Amir verse that was taken off for the eventual song tape, and in the case of God Bless You, the beat is marginally different than the one that would be on Wait on Iridescence. Again, it is cool to get a peek behind the curtain of what a lot of these tracks were originally meant to sound like, and they did sound great, but in most cases that different version isn't that much different than the one that we got, so it kind of feels a little lost on me. And in a few cases, there are some totally original tracks whose elements were repurposed in other songs, like for example the track Let's Get Married and the first bonus track Breakfast in Bed, 
which both feature choruses from Ryan Beatty that were repurposed on Kevin Abstract's 2019 album Arizona Baby. The Let's Get Married chorus was integrated into the track Baby Boy, and the Breakfast in Bed chorus would be added to Crumble, which was my personal favorite track on that album. And I'd actually say the implementation of that chorus is better on that track than it is on Breakfast in Bed. And no, the fact that these choruses were officially repurposed doesn't take away from those songs in their entirety. Let's Get Married is a particularly beautiful song that I'm happy to hear a full version of. But just on a personal level, I feel like I'm happier with the way the elements from these songs were officially integrated into Arizona Baby. And Hearing this just makes me enjoy that record even more than I already did. Now, of course, there are a few tracks on here that are essentially new, in that we've only really heard them in the form of leaks or snippets, and there are definitely some gems in the new songs category. I, like I'm sure many in the fan base will say, am particularly glad that Ready for War has a proper CD quality version, because that was a song that was very heavily teased back in the day, and it is a truly fantastic song. Speaking specifically about the Amir thing, I think his verse is incredibly potent. And given that Bareface is my favorite member of the group, it's nice to hear a version of the song where his outro is actually crystal clear. Although I still need someone to transcribe what the hell he's saying because you know he sings in cursive. I don't know what he's saying at the very end of his part. But it is a great track, and so is Don't Be Famous, which the group previously previewed an altered version of on their Things We Lost in the Fire radio show in 2018. I'm glad this version actually exists now, especially because I think it's actually better than the previewed version when it was previewed on the Things We Lost in the Fire radio show. Merlin's hook was reversed for some reason, and I think the version that's on here with the non-reversed hook is far better. I'll Be There is also a particularly beautiful highlight too, very mellow and held together by some beautiful Joba vocals on the hook, and I especially love Bareface and Ryan Beatty's contributions here as well. I had heard some versions of the song before, but it's nice to hear a fully completed version here, and it's a very good track. Keep On Shining is also pretty unique, and it's a very chill, laid-back jam with a nice hook from Kevin, and some solid verses from Merlin, Matt, and most especially Joba. And the album's closer, the bonus track September, which is sometimes referred to to as September 019, is something totally new. I feel like I hadn't even heard this in any leaks or snippets that I had previously heard. Not that it wasn't floating around, I just never noticed. It's an acoustic track with a very mellow beat and a lot of auto-tuned vocals, almost like the vocals are a bit of a lighter precursor to some of what we would end up hearing on Iridescence, complete with the vocal ad-libs we constantly hear on that album with the take it all or leave it and the I feel you. I love these kinds of emotional Brockhampton songs, and this one is perfectly in my wheelhouse, and I'm really glad that it closed out the album, or at least the version of the album that I had listened to, because I think there were some outlets that this version was leaked on, that this record was leaked on, that didn't have the two bonus tracks, but I'm glad that mine did, because I think they're both good. So yeah, I'm in a kind of conflicted place with Puppy, because I feel like I enjoyed the material on it, but I partially feel like I enjoyed the material on it because I had already heard most of it before, and not just from scouring YouTube for leaks or snippets or what have you. I had heard a lot of it before in official capacities. So a part of me doesn't necessarily feel as mind blown as I thought I was going to be, because I will fully admit maybe it was just my own expectations getting in the way, but I was half expecting that this record was going to be made up of stuff we hadn't heard before, not stuff that the group had officially repurposed. Matter of fact, I almost kind of feel like Amir's departure wasn't the entire reason this thing got scrapped. I think it created a snowball effect, sure, and I'm sure the group would probably say that his departure had a lot to do with it, but he appears on probably about half to a little over half of the album, but a lot of the tracks that he was on did get repurposed and released in some official capacity, so I truly think the band could have released this album in some way without him. I think they could have removed his contributions and still released this project in its form that it was basically in. If anything, I feel like it's less that they wanted to not release it because it had Amir on it, but rather because with Amir gone, they wanted to just kind of go in a different direction to be able to push forward a little bit instead of resting on the laurels of what they had done on the Saturation Trilogy. Your guess is as good as mine, and I'm sure we'll never really get the answer unless any of the members of the group specifically say what happened. And outside of Kevin, I don't think anyone else from the group has officially acknowledged the leak or anything like that, so who knows if we'll hear anything from them. All in all though, yeah, I'm a bit conflicted. I can say I really enjoy the material on this record, 
But just on a personal level, I can't say I'm that upset that it didn't get released in 2018. Again, I'm happier with the way things turned out. And as someone who, again, considers Ginger to be my favorite album, if Puppy had released, we probably would have never gotten Ginger. And I don't know where I'd be without that album. But still, I am happy this does exist and that it finally is out because I know that this has been the grail of all grails among the Brockhampton fandom, even after the group disbanded. And I know quite a few people were really disappointed with the family and TM, especially TM. So hopefully the fact that this is finally here will give some fans the proper Brockhampton closure that they were really looking for all this time. And it's also my hope that with this thing being out and the fans having the closure that they needed and actually getting to hear this record, maybe now some of the ones who were kind of harsh on the records from Iridescence onward will go back and give them another shot. I hope I don't word this weird, but sometimes I think fans of any kind of medium tend to have a tendency to not like something when it's not what they want, but then give that thing another chance when they do get what they want. So hopefully now that the fans got what they wanted, maybe they'll go back and give Iridescence and Ginger and Roadrunner and so on another chance. And if that does happen to me, that's a net positive. So even if I wasn't as mind blown by this thing as some others probably surely are, I'm glad it does exist. And I'm glad that it finally got a release and that the fans finally have this project that they've been looking for for so long. Usually this is the part of the video where I'd give the album a rating, but I'm going to, I believe for the first time in any of my reviews, give it a no rating. I'm not going to give it a rating. Because for all intents and purposes, the album is still technically unfinished. I say it like that because while the version that it's released in is basically what the album would have been, these tracks were eventually changed and officially released. So technically, I'm still listening to unfinished versions of these songs here. Like the songs that ended up on Iridescence. I'm technically listening to the unfinished versions of songs that I hear on another album. So I don't know if I necessarily feel comfortable giving the album a rating when a part of me feels like my ears were not necessarily intended to hear it in the first place. If the group didn't want to release it, there was clearly a reason they didn't want to release it. And because of that, I don't necessarily feel comfortable rating it. At least with the Longest Summer in America documentary, when that came out last year, I was comfortable rating it because, yes, that was leaked, but it had been officially released beforehand. Fans had gotten to see that in theaters back in the day. This, though, I don't know if the group necessarily wanted it out, so I don't know if I'm going to give it a proper rating. With that said, if you're a Brockhampton fan, I do definitely recommend checking it out for yourself. If nothing else, just to get a peek behind the curtain and see what could have been had Brockhampton not changed gears and had Amir not been kicked from the group and had all the stuff happen back then. I know I kind of worded that a little weird at the end, but you know what I mean. It's kind of like an interesting what-if scenario of an album. So I think it's definitely worth checking out for that and that alone. But that's just my opinion on Puppy. What do you guys think about it? Are you happy that it's finally out? Do you not really care that it's finally out? Do you enjoy it? Do you not enjoy it? Do you not really care that much? Are you just completely indifferent? And I'd like to know your head cannons for a minute. Had this record actually come out, had Amir not been kicked out of the group and this record come out, what do you think Brockhampton would have looked like afterward? I mentioned in this video that I had thought if this record came out, we would have never gotten Ginger. But what do you guys think? Do you think we still could have gotten an album like that? Do you think the group would have totally switched gears? Would they have continued to rest on their laurels? Would they have somehow turned out worse if they ended up releasing this album? Do you think there's a possible scenario where they release this album and then Amir gets kicked out and then we happen to get ginger roadrunner etc i want to know your head cannons what do you guys think whatever your thoughts and opinions are leave them down in the comments below let's keep this civil and have some fun as we like to do if you guys want to hit like and subscribe and support some of my other ventures that i have linked in the description thank you if not it's no big deal i totally understand and yeah once i stop recording i'm going to continue on with the video game videos and i'm going to talk about my favorite games of 1995 to 1999 very much looking forward to it that's going to be a fun video so Stay tuned for that, but until then, thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.